Hello everyone, welcome to IS Baba's 60 days rapid revision series for prelims 2022. This is day 28 and we take up history. So along with history, we take up most of the art and culture topics. So these are the topics we are going to discuss. So first one, the Buddhist philosophies. So Buddhism, so it got split in the second Buddhist council. So it got split into Staviravadins and Mahasangikas. Staviravadins, they were more orthodoxic and Mahasangikas, they were liberal. Then Staviravadins, they were called as Theravadins thereafter. And the Mahasangikas, they remain to be Mahasangikas. And friends, they say that Staviravadins are nothing but Theravadins, but there is a slight difference. There is bit evolution. Then come to next, Hinayans. So these Theravadins, they were called the lesser vehicles because they preached that we can reach the moksha only if we struggle hard. Okay. So that is Hinayana and then Mahayana means the bigger vehicle. That means so we can take the blessings of others. We can take the preaching of others and then we can attain moksha. And once we attain moksha, so we can also help others to gain moksha. So here the people who joined together to attain moksha. So that expanded. That's why Mahayana sect. So this has more number of population and recognition now. So this is the greater vehicle and this is the lesser vehicle. But Mahayana sect further got divided into various other sects. That is Chaitika, then Kukutika, then Lokatiravadins and Vajrayana Buddhism. So here the latest Vajrayana Buddhism. So that it depends mainly on the magic. That means the saints and others they will do magic and they can cure the difficulties. And in Vajrayana Buddhism, so a family life, the enjoyment, luxury, so all these they are also allowed. Okay. So like this, the Mahayana is becoming more and more relaxive. So however, it is left to the religion to take its course. Then come to next. The Theravada Buddhism. So Theravada Buddhism also known as the Mantrayana. So here Buddhist monks. So they write down the traditionally oral scriptures. So these are the sacred ones. Once you write that is the final. Then today these writings are known as the Pali texts and are the oldest written record of Buddhist teachings in the world. Then Theravada Buddhism promotes the idea of critical analysis of the sacred texts. And suggesting that a complete understanding of Buddhist scriptures can only come from the personal experience of an individual. So here it is like I have to experience whatever written in the text. So I cannot learn from others or I cannot preach it to others. Then over time Theravada tradition split into three subjects that is Jitavana, then Abhayagiri Vihara, then Mahavihara. So remember these, these are not the Mahasangikas. These were the Theravadins sects. Then come to next Mahayana. So Mahayana Buddhism. So here the people commit themselves to achieving mindfulness and have faith in Buddha. Then liberation if not obtained independently may be obtained by the Buddha Amitabha. So Amitabha means it is a celestial Buddha. That means like the teachers all around. So they are carrying the souls of Buddha or maybe the Buddha is present immortally all around us. So even by learning the preachings from immortal Buddha, we can attain moksha. So that is Amitabha. So mark this word. And then Vajrayana Buddhism, it is also known as esoteric Buddhism. Esoteric means something abstract, so not so properly defined. Then it is sometimes classified as a variation of Mahayana Buddhism. And here the Vajrayana saints or the Mahasiddhas, they lived in wilderness and practiced rituals like alcohol consumption, eating, dancing, singing, etc. So here family life, so that was permitted. Then this led to creation of Buddhist tantras and writings. So the tantric writings that came. Tantric writing means so by doing some magic we can cure the diseases or the difficulties and others. Then Buddhist tantra writings include practices such as reciting mantras, then using mandalas, then imagining gods and buddhas and utilizing the mudras. So all these they utilized to do some magic and remove the difficulties of the human beings. Then Mahasangika. So this was an early Buddhist school. So Staviravadin insisted on more religious rules, but their suggestions were rejected by the majority at the council. And here the Mahasangika was born on the second Buddhist council and the famous caves of Ajanta, Yellora, Karla, etc. So they have the figurines. So these figurines, so they were being inspired by the Mahasangika sect that is Chaitika. So remember this Ajanta, Yellora and Karla Chaityas, they have the depictions of Chaitika sect. Then the biography of Buddha was written by Lokottaravada sect. So mark this as important again. And the Kukkutika sect. So that set down an early chronology of the Buddhist life. So they set the early chronology. So these are some of the facts. And then come to next. The Zen, Zen sect. It is a school of Mahayana Buddhism that originated in China during the Tang dynasty. And it spread to Japan in 7th century AD. And meditation is the most distinctive feature of this tradition. And later the fourth branch that is Navayana. So Navayana was 
propounded by Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. So, this also we mark it as important. Then, the Buddhist councils. So, first council, it was held soon after the Mahaparinipana of Buddha. So, after the death of Buddha, around 433 BC, under the patronage of King Ajat Chatru. So, it was preceded by Mahakasapa or Mahakashyapa. So, friends, here Mahakasapa is the Pali and the Mahakashyapa is the Sanskrit. So, even though the languages are different, the actual meaning will not be so much of different and the pronunciation will also be same so make sure that while taking the guesswork so don't think about the pali sanskrit all those so go ahead the guessing itself is like the backdoor entry so don't worry about all this then the council was held in the satapani cave at rajagriha then the council was held in the purpose of preserving buddha's teachings and the rules of the disciples and during this council teachings of buddhas were divided into three pitakas so mark this in the first council three pitakas were formed and then the second council it was held in vaishali a village in bihar under the patronage of king kala shoka and it was preceded by sabakami then the third council it was held in 250 bc in pataliputra under the patronage of the ashoka the great and it was preceded by the mogaliputra tissa and then the fourth council it was held in 72 ad at Kundalvana Kashmir and it was preceded by Vasumitra while Ashogosha was his deputy and the patronage of Kanishka and then Buddhism was divided into two sects namely Mahayan and Hinayan. So here the second Buddhist council the Theravadins and Mahasangikas and the fourth Buddhist council Mahayans and Hinayans. So remember this then Jainism friends here the basic philosophy of Jainism I am not going to discuss so even UPSC has stopped asking the basic philosophies. So, maximum it will ask any keyword or any unique philosophies. So, here are some of them. The time has no end or beginning. So, this is one of the Jain philosophies. So, it is that the wheel of time is divided into two halves. That is Utsarpini and the Ausarpini. So, that is the ascending and the descending times. So, very similar to Yin and Yang of China. Then Agamas. So, what are Agamas? These are the texts of Jainism based on the discourses of Tirthankaras. Then Tatvarta Sutra. So, it is the only text authoritative to both Digambaras and Svetambaras. Then, Mahavira taught the doctrine of multi-sided reality, now known as Anekantvad. That is, the truth can be said in many forms or the God is one, but he is having many forms. So, that is. Then, Sayyadvada. So, here it is like there is not merely two possibilities of existence or non-existence. So, there are seven different kinds. So, Sayyadvada, that means, so in world there is nothing like happiness or the sadness so it can exist in seven different types or there is nothing like the alive or dead so it can be in seven different types so everything can be related here and the sayadvada is also called the doctrine of maybe or the doctrine of possibility and then another sevenfold system so that was nayavada so here the theory of standpoints so nayavada means so up to your standpoint it might be true and to my standpoint my opinion might be true so these are some of the ones then come to next the Pratikramana. So, here in Jainism, it is a ritual during which Jains repent for their sins. So, Pratikramana means repenting for one's sins. And then Siddha Chakra. It is a popular yantra or mandala used for worship in Jainism. And it is also known as Navapada in Shvetambara tradition and Navadevta in Digambara tradition. Then Kalpa Sutra. So, it is a Jain text containing biographies of Jain Tirthankaras, especially Parswanatha, Mahavir Swami and others. And then Gunasthana. So, here it is the 14 stages of spiritual development and growth through the soul gradually passes before it attains moksha. So, the four stages, four janmas, we can say. Then, come to next, the Shramana and Parivrajaka. So, Shramanas, before 6th century BCE, several Shramana movements are known to have flourished in India and Shramana coexisted with the Vedic Hinduism, so, but was distinct from it. So, here, the Shramana was started as a part of Hinduism, but here the superiority of Brahmins, so that was not taken into consideration and the luxury life was not taken into consideration. So, Shramana followers sacrificed marriage and home life in order to seek spiritual liberation by following an ascetic path. Ascetic path means celibic, celibatic path. Then, the Brahmins who were taught to be the keepers of sacred knowledge found in Vedas were rejected by the Shramanas. So, that means anyone can keep the sacredness of Vedas, not only Brahmins. So, anyone can access to Vedas, no matter he is a Shudra or a backward caste. Then, Parivrajaka. Parivrajaka in Hinduism means forest dweller or wandering ascetic. Here, Parivrajaka is a lifestyle wherein the seeker forsakes attachments in spiritual pursuits on his own 
to attain the spiritual excellence so one is living all his attachments then today parivrajaka is more commonly associated with buddhism and parivrajakas roamed around seeking contact with different thinkers and many parivrajakas lived alone and did not recognize the institution of any masters and they pursued the knowledge on their own so mark this as very much important so here independent the gaining of knowledge then come to next the unakoti bas relief so bas relief means that is the sculpturing that is done on the mountain rocks so in the large large rocks so the sculpturing is been made likewise and here unakoti literally means one less than a crore and then unakoti is famous for the collection of enormous bas relief carvings on the side of a rocky hill so where is unakoti so it is in tripura and these bas reliefs were probably made between 7th century to 13th century ad so mark the date for chronology then the bas relief sculptures of unakoti are the largest that are found in india and then the primary deities depicted at unakoti are shiva durga ganesh and there are many other deities like kalabairava then chandrashekar then kamadevi so kamadevi was depicted carrying bow and arrows so all these so all these are in current affairs so make sure that you will remember them then come to next important playwrights so here upsc always asks so who is the playwright and what is the playwright and what is contained in the playwright so just match the following will not be suffice here so i have brought some details of various playwrights so basa so his books were swapna vasavadattam then pratigna yogandarayana and then charudattam then pancharatral then karna bhara the dutavakya then bhatcharita then abhibaraki then shudraka so his famous work was mrichakatikam which means the ardhan vehicle or the clay cart then the play is based on the love story of brahmin charudatta and a prostitute basanta sena so this is a famous one we already know then vishakadatta he was one of the most famous play writers of gupta period mark it as important and his famous compositions were mudra rakshasa and devi chandraguptam so in mudra rakshasa he describes about the fall of nandas and the rise of chandraguptta maurya and the devi chandraguptam he mentioned about gupta emperor chandragupta and his brother ramgupta and in mudra rakshasa love joy heroine comedy etc are absent so if something is absent so that would be extreme so we mark it as important then come to next harshavardhana so he was the ruler of kanauj and he himself composed three famous plays that is nagananda ratnavali and priyadarshika nagananda describes about the prohibition of snake sacrifice and then ratnavali mentions about the love affair between udayan and his lover ratnavali and then while priyadarshika describes about the love affairs between the udayan and priyadarshika so udayan his love between the two girls that is being mentioned here then mahendra varman he was a great pallava king his famous play is matra vilasa prahasana so prahasana prahasana means something prasang type so mark it if the name comes so by the name you should decipher whether it is a south indian name north indian name or east or west indian names and it is a satire and that creates fun at the peculiar aspects of kapalika and pashupata cult so some uh, sex and their peculiar aspects that are being taken up and a satire is being hit on those in this book so mark these as important ones then kalidas so he was a famous play writer in the court of chandragupta vikramaditya and his famous plays were malvika agnimitram vikram arvasiyam and abhignana shakuntalam so these are famous books you get what is written in in almost all the websites so i need not repeat them again then babu bhuti this was asked in 2021 prelims so he wrote uttar ramacharita is another famous play of babu bhuti and his other compositions is multi madhava where love story of tantric rites played important role but comedian was absent so here no comedy but tantric that is magic and others that is being present then come to next the important playwrights so lastly we can have the match the following amar simha amar kosha then amogavarsha so prashnottara malika then aryabhata so surya siddhanta and aryabhatiya then ashwagosha buddha charita then ashwagosha again saundara nanda then ashwagosha again vajra suchi then banabatta harsh charita bana and then again bana kadambari and then coming more bharata natya shastra basa sapnava savadattam baskara 2 leelavati then baskara charya siddhanta shiromani leelavati bija ganita then griha ganita gola adhyaya then battin ravana vada bhavabhuti uttaram charita then science and math literary works so here we have pingala pingala who lived around the early 1st century ad 
so he used binary numbers to classify the vedic meters so the binary language was known to him then pandini's grammar that is ashtadhyayi so the grammar on sanskrit we know that then aryabhatiyam so aryabhata's book so it was divided into four chapters that is first one the astronomical constant and the sign table so we know the sign wave and the sign table then mathematics required for computations of various movements of the planets then division of times and the rules for computing the longitudes of planets then the armillary sphere rules related to the problems of trigonometry and computation of eclipses so just make sure that the sign table then the movement of the planets longitudes and then trigonometry so remember these keywords you need not remember these exaggerations and explanations then varaha mihra so he lived in ujjain and he wrote three important books that is pancha siddhantika brihat samhita and brihat jataka so the first is a summary of five early astronomical system including surya siddhanta so that astronomical system we remember then brahma gupta of bilamala in rajasthan so he was born in 598 ad and he wrote brahma sputa siddhanta and another of his book was the kandakadyaka so that remained a popular handbook for the astronomical computations so all these they were mathematicians physicians and astronomers then baskara so he was the author of siddhanta shiromani so a book in four parts again leelavati means arithmetic bija ganita means algebra then ganita adhyaya then gola adhyaya means astronomy so remember gola then madhava so he developed a procedure to determine the positions of moon every 36 minutes then nilakanta somayaji so he found the correct formula for the equation of the center of planets so in the center what would be the core or the mantle so all those things so the formula for them then come to next alvars and nayanars so we know that nayanars were devoted to lord shiva and alvars devoted to lord vishnu and alvars were active around 5th to 10th century ad and nayanars they were 6th to 8th century ad so almost they coincided but alvars they were present for the more number of years and then the high priest of raja raja chola one that is nambiyandar nambi so he compiled the hymns to a, into a series of volumes called tirumurai so remember tirumurai it is a compilation of the nayanar's poems and it was compiled by nambiyandar nambi then the hymns of alvars were made into a consolidated volume as divya prabandham so that is the nalayira divya prabandham so these ones then come to next important saints nayanar's here we have tiru nilakanta then maipurul then viralminda then amaranidi and iripata and yenati nathar so all this you should not only know to pronounce properly and you should also know to remember it again then alvars shri andal then tirumulisai alvar then tiruppan alvar then nammalvar and kulashekar alvar so along with that you will also remember the names given in the ncrts okay so nammalvar tondaradipadi alvar so all those we remember here then hindu philosophies the six orthodox philosophies we discuss one is the sankhya so it was postulated by kapila and it postulates that everything in reality seems from purusha and prakriti so the natural reproductive system male and female so not only the living organisms even the non living organisms they are born by the mating of the male and female so that is what the philosophy and here the purush cannot be modified or changed while prakriti brings the change in all objects so again this prakriti which brings all the changes that needs to be remembered then yoga so yoga literally means the union of two principal entities so that means the body and the environment so if you do the asanas then our body will be fit to the environment and that will lead to great achievements and that will lead to moksha so likewise so here the self control yama niyama asana pranayama pratyahara dharana dhyana and samadhi so if you practice all these things so but obvious our body will be in coordination with the nature and that is a peaceful life and according to yoga that is the moksha then nyaya so gautama muni so he propounded and also mark patanjali here the nyaya philosophy states that the thing is acceptable unless it is in accordance with the reason so rationality nyaya means justice or the rationality rationalism then come to next the vaisheshika so it was propounded by kanada so here every particle in the nature so that was built by kana or atom so the atomic theory so that is the philosophy here then purva mimamsa or the jemini according to purva mimamsa vedas are eternal so whatever veda says so that is really true and that is the one which had happened in the past and that is the one which is going to be happen in the future and then vedantas so it is also called as uttar mimamsa so here vedanta means the anta of veda the end of vedas 
so then came the upanishads so now the people started practicing more and more upanishads and not the vedas so these are some of the philosophies then bhakti movement bhakti saints some of the ones are vallabhacharya so remember the pushti marga friends here whenever upsc asks a question the literary works of those bhakti saints are being asked so that is why we concentrate on those and then vidyapati vidyapati was known for his poetry dedicated to shiva whom he fondly addressed as ugna then bhakti movement in maharashtra so here we have the varkari and darkari saints or the varakari and darakaris so varakaris are the mild devotees of god vitala at pandarpur and then darakaris so they were the heroic followers of the cult of ramadasa then some of the saints of maharashtra were gnaneshwar or gnanadeva so here gnaneshwari was the book written by him and apart from that amrutanubhava and haripata so these are the books written by him so mark this as important then namadeva so he is considered one of the five revered gurus in dadu panth tradition so that is the tradition followed by the dadu panth and his commemorates so here the other four were dadu dayal himself kabir haridas and ravidas and it is believed that his abhangas were included in guru granth sahib so whatever the marathi saints of bhakti movement so they postulated or whatever shlokas they wrote or whatever songs they sang so they were called abhangas so mark this abhangas is important then sant eknath so introduced a new form of marathi religious song called barud so remember this barud then tukaram so he is known for his abhangas or the dohas so whatever kabir wrote was called as dohas and whatever the marathi saints wrote it was called the abhangas then ramdas he wrote dasa bodha a treatise on advaita vedanta in marathi and his other works were karunashtake jana swabhava gosanvi and manoche shloka so the marathi wordings so pronounce again and again and practice them then ramananda so ramananda had many disciples that is kabir he was a weaver then sena was a barber sadana the butcher then raidas the cobbler then danna the jat farmer then narahari goldsmith and pipa the rajput prince so from various caste creed and religion so he had following and the disciplinary so we mark it as important then kabir composition of kabir are compiled in bijak so this bijak was once asked by upsc and then comes nath pankthis siddhas and yogis so these people so they stated that the ascetism celibacy and other things so they can also lead us to moksha then come to next then we got the krishna cult that is the mirabai chaitanya narsing mehta so all these they prayed lord krishna and thereby the krishna cult of bhakti movement started and then came saint tyagaraja from south india so tyagaraja muttu swami dikshitar and shyama shastri so they were the trios who found the carnatic music and the tyagaraja's famous book was pancharatna kritis or the five gems then tallakappa annamacharya or the annamaya so he was the devotee of lord venkateshwara so Anamaya was once asked by UPSC in 2018 prelims. Then Akamaha Devi, a 20th century Bhakti saint who belonged to the southern region of Karnataka. So she was the contemporary of Basavanna and others. Then Jana Bai. So she was born in Shudra caste around 13th century AD, and she worked in the household of Saint Namadeva. Then Bahina or Bahina Bai. So a 17th century poet saint of Maharashtra who wrote different abhangas. Then Andal, the only female alwar. So mark it as important. and then karaikal amayar so she was one among the three women nayanars so she was not the one and only but andal was one and only alwar then come to next gupta temple at bilsar so last week archaeological survey of india discovered the remains of ancient temple dating back to gupta period in a village in uttar pradesh ita district and then the findings of excavation the bilsar site was declared protected in 1928 and this year two decorative pillars with human figurines resembling an ancient temple were discovered so here we can see the two pillars and then the temple entrance like thing so that is being shown here and then the stairs of temple had shankalipi inscriptions so we also discuss what is shankalipi script and the inscriptions then madur mats so madur mats are madur mats so here two women from sabang in west bengal's pashtim mednipur so they have got the national handicraft award for their skills in making madur mats or the madur floor mats and here more facts about the madur mats so these are an intrinsic part of bengali lifestyle and they are made of natural fibers and mats locally known as musland or mataranchi and then the west bengal kadi and village industries board has taken up an initiative to develop skill capacity and institution of this madur kati artisans then come to next 
the maslan so maslan is a fine quality of mother mat which takes few weeks to weave then during the 18th century maslan mats flourished under the royal patronage and in 1744 nawab aliwardi khan so he made it obligatory to supply maslan mats for the collectorate so these were some of the facts regarding the mother mats and the maslan mats so mark this as important then the langa manganiyar heritage so the ballads folklore and the songs of langa manganiyar artists are being preserved through an initiative for documentation and digitization so one ngo from america so it is doing that then who are these langa manganiyars the langas and manganiyars are hereditary communities of muslim musicians residing mostly in the western rajasthan's jaisalmer and barmer district so here we can see how they are singing the iconic internationally acclaimed folk artists have been hit hard by the covid-19 pandemic and apart from the pandemic so they are also being hurt by the loss of patronage and the upgradation and others then come to next the shankalipi so shankalipi or the shell script is a term used by scholars to describe ornate spiral characteristics assumed to be brahmi derivatives so mark this as important all shankalipis they are derived from the brahmi script and here we can see the shankalipi that means the words are being carved just like the conch or the shanka then come to next they are found in the inscriptions across north central india and date to between 4th to 8th centuries ad then both shankalipi and brahmi are stylized scripts used primarily for the names and signatures okay so these are some of the facts then moving further the script was discovered in 1836 on a brass trident in uttarakhand's barahat by english scholar so here the brass trishul so that had this shankalipi then the year later he came across two more similar scripts at nagarjuna group of caves so nagarjuna and barabar caves so there the shankalipi was found again then prominent sites with shell inscriptions include mundeshwari temple in bihar then udaygiri caves in madhya pradesh so udaygiri caves was once asked by prelims so mark this as important then mansar in maharashtra and some caves of gujarat and maharashtra so they have this then in fact shell inscriptions are also reported in indonesia's java and borneo so not only in india even in abroad we have these so these are the things for today then come to the last part friends as we have discussed throughout the class india is a land which has sheltered as many religion class creed sect etc so it is a shelterer of shelterers it is a feeder of feeders and it is a mother of mothers so we will keep that mother intact and we will make sure that even if so many people come into so we will accommodate them we will celebrate the diversity and we will exhort with joy and grandeur that india stands to be the kamadenu that is the great mother so we all strive for that we will do all the very best good luck friends